So we are going to play a demo today. Check out this demo. Um, the game is called Voice of Cards, The Isle Dragon Roars. Uh, it's a square game. Uh, I believe it's about an hour long game. It's a JRPG disguised as a card game from what I was reading about it. Uh, but looks like something I would like, so I wanted to try it out and see if it is a game I might purchase and play in the future. So let's go ahead and get it started. If you like the music. Good afternoon. Or should I say evening? Morning. Morning? At any rate, I am the Game Master. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Before we begin, there is something I must tell you. You see, my job is to draw you into this world with my voice and cards. Which is why I believe it best for you to play with the sound on. In fact, I insist on it. However, as you can see, my voice is subtitled, so you can always read along as well. Now then, are you ready? Let's begin. <clears throat> All right. Welcome to Voice of Cards. You are about to take the first steps of your adventure. Through a realm of sword and sorcery, you will travel, battling bloodthirsty monsters as you strive to realize your ambitions. I have every faith you will accomplish great things here. I, I am merely a witness to your exploits. Now then, your departure draws nigh. May your journey be a safe one. All right. Seems interesting so far. This is Castle Advent. Queen Nilla reigns over the kingdom from within its walls. Three white-clad adventurers have gathered here at the Queen's summons. Present yourselves, O oh faithful of the Ivory Order. Your piece is in the middle of the screen. Use the WASDA keys to move in any direction that you want. Move to the Queen. As you continue on your journey, your objective will change. Press the E key whenever you need a reminder of what to do next. You will see cards with glowing edges on your adventure. Step on to one to trigger an event that will move the story along. From upon her throne, the Queen regards the adventurers. So you are disciples of the Order. The youngest of the three steps forward. She holds herself with well-born grace. I am Winifred of the Ivory Order, Your Majesty, she says. I lead this fellowship. She bows, glancing to her two companions. In response, the stern-looking one inclines his head and brusquely names himself Berwin. The older man is the picture of courtesy, as he genuflects and introduces himself as Hedwin. I like that little touch of the them bowing and, and such. It is these three our story follows today. In other words, you party. The queen acknowledges the fellowship with a nod. In a soft voice, she explains her errand. Someone has stolen the royal treasure. I bid you reclaim it. Under normal circumstances, I would entrust this to my soldiers, but I do not wish to spread thin my forces with the recent 
monster troubles. It seems the troubled queen has judged she can entrust this matter to none but the Ivory Order, beloved of the people and unmatchable in battle. It is our honor to serve you, Your Majesty, and thus the quest falls to the Fellowship. Short of any clues that could lead them to the culprit, however, they press the Queen for further information. Uh, what will you ask the Queen? Um, what is the Royal Treasure? The Fellowship asks the Queen what the Royal Treasure is. The Queen describes a bottle containing a certain liquid. Without it, she trails off, but the desperation in her voice suggests its loss could spell disaster for the kingdom. Did you see the thief, your majesty? The fellowship asks the queen if she knows anything about the thief. The queen says witnesses might be found at Nexton. Shall there be a reward? Usually, one would expect recompense for this sort of undertaking. As demanding a reward would go against the tenants of the Ivory Order, you hold your tongue. The Queen, however, has already said she will reward the Fellowship with whatever they desire. It seems the Royal Treasure is just that important. Pray Terry no longer here. I await news of your success. The Fellowship bows and takes their leave. Interesting. Uh, head south to Nexton. Press the escape key to open the menu. There you can perform various actions such as saving and changing skills or equipment. Cards you encounter on your journey will be added to your collection, which can also be found from the menu screen. Please give it a look from time to time. I mean, let's check out the menu now and see what it looks like. Alright, so main party shows their health and stuff. XP as well. Own cards. Don't look like I have much. I'll, I have item cards. Equipment cards. Nothing that's probably not. No key items. Skills. These just must be skills I I I own. I guess is the best way to do it. Have an unlocked monster cards. Characters. Gives you a little pretty cool. I like that. Look at them. All right, let's just get going. We can waste no time finding the treasure. Winifred strides toward town. Wait, cries Berwin, blocking Winifred's path. A monster. You dare stand in our way? Edwin scowls at the foul creature. It lunges at the fellowship. Battle time. We get like a little battle board. And fight. Fight is on. Take down all the enemies and victory shall be yours. First try dragging magic strike over to your opponent. The number in red indicates...
dictates HP. When a card's HP drops to zero, it becomes incapacitated. A card's attack is indicated in its lower left, and defense is on its lower right. Give careful consideration to you, to your and your opponent's values before acting. Generate one. I don't know what that is. So attack plus fire damage. Oh, I'll get a gem up there. That does it for battle basics. The rest is up to you. Play your hand wisely. Well, I, I don't know what gems do. So attack plus three. Add value of roll to attack and deal bulk damage. Still looks like a gem. I bet you that must. I must have to use that. Cast it. Okay, roll with the enter key to calculate damage. Nice, six. That's my strike again. Did pretty well that time. Alright. Kind of an interesting take on a JRPG. Hit XP and gold. Did we get any... Any items or anything? Nope. Doesn't seem like it. Winifred heaves a disgruntled sigh as she smooths her rumpled garb. Showing no signs of weariness from battle, Berwin silently wipes the monster's ichor from his weapon. Hedwin inspects the remains of their foe. The queen spoke true, he mutters, his face masked in contemplation. Winifred gives a grim nod at his words. Mayhap the treasure's theft and the monster's behavior are connected somehow. First things first, the Fellowship needs to gather more information. To Nexton, they set their sights. All right. Yes, let's enter Nexton. Lucky for you, there are sorts of establishments in town to support you and your venture. Would you care to have them explained? Sure. This is the inn. Rest here to recover your party's HP. This is the apothecary. Here you can purchase items to restore your party's health, cure their status, ailments, and more. The armor. They sell weapons and armor to give your party an edge in battle. This is the item shop. The key, the stock handy items, they stock handy items to use on your journey. Game parlor, come here to play some card games when you need a break from your travels. That sums it up. These establishments are here to help you, so don't be a stranger. Speak to the inhabitants of Nexton to gather information on the thief who stole the royal treasure. Welcome to Nexton, hails a man. Anything you want to ask him? Have you heard that there was a theft? The Fellowship asks if he's heard anything about the theft of the royal treasure. The man's eyes widen. He leans close to Winifred and whispers something in her ear. Welcome to Nexton. He's weird. You fulfilled the necessary requirements and unlocked Mature Man's character story. Okay. I gotta see where that comes in. Into effect. Come 
made a promise to the love of his life when they were married. I shall love you till death to us part. One half century later, he has proven to be a man of his word. You can look forward to the backs of these cards and the whole story in the retail version of the game. Alright. I gotcha. I get what you're what you're doing here. I'm too scared to leave town with all those monsters out there. The woman sighs. Alright. The man helpfully advises you take the opportunity to purchase equipment and curatives while you are in town. Unlock the average man's character story. Interesting How that they tell you, you that you the have done that. Requires. But they won't let you really look at it. Okay. Shows you the current equipment. I already have an iron sword. A mercenary sword is better. It shows you that it, it, it increases it. Buy and equip. The only thing that's really better is this steel breastplate. And I can afford it. Why not? Looks like I can add two more cards right here. So I bet you get five people. Will that be all? The proprietor asks. Weapon, armor, and accessory cards are only effective once you've equipped them to your character. Open the menu and select equipment to make sure your party's ready for battle. Already did. You have fulfilled the necessary requirements and unlocked the blacksmith's character story. Right, that's kind of cool, the way it works there. A woman sits hunched over by the side of the road. Upon catching sight of the fellowship, she calls out for their aid. She's sprained her ankle and needs you to take her to the nearby apothecary. All right. Winifred rushes to her and helps her up. Berwin lifts the woman onto his back, and the fellowship sets out in search of an apothecary. Transport the hobbled woman to the apothecary. All right, let's go. You can jump over to upward facing terrain cards. Use the arrow key to choose the direction you want to jump, then press the enter key. Try jumping to the apothecary. Huh. Okay. You arrive at the apothecary. After taking a curative, the woman begins hopping up and down. Nothing holds a candle to ivory order medicine, she beams. She turns to the fellowship, her eyes widening in surprise. You three. It seems she's only now realized the fellowship are disciples of the ivory order. The woman takes each of their hands in turn, thanking them for their service. 
The Ivory Order is famous for providing medical supplies throughout the realm, and indeed the wider world. Every smile the Order brings to someone's face makes Winifred proud to be a disciple. You fulfilled the necessary requirements to unlock the mature woman's flip side story. You can read special stories about the characters and enemies among your collected cards. Progress through the adventure and progress through the adventure and re and defeat the myriad of enemies in your path to collect every special story. View your collection? Yes. As these little fluffs mature, their fur grows until it covers their face. As this is quite the existential threat, they entice other monsters to trim their fur so they can see. The story is locked. Give me, like... I'll look forward to the backs of these cars, the whole story and read back. Alright. It doesn't look like we're even going to get to read any of those. But that's alright. Speak to the inhabitants of Nexon to gather information on the thief who stole the... That's what I've been trying to do. Is she going to talk to us? holds a candle to ivory order medicine. Same thing. The woman, Dude, this, swigging, this the woman begs the fellowship for their autographs. She seems to greatly admire the order. I know there's nothing to worry about with disciples of the order here, she says, relief flooding her features. Upon asking, the woman says she was attacked by a monster outside of town. A strange creature, she says, nothing but bones, and it clutched a bottle of medicine as if its life hey. depended on it. I think we found a clue. You fill the necessary requirements and unlock the woman's character story. The man claims he saw a suspicious someone leaving the castle grounds carrying what looked to be a medicine bottle. He didn't get a good look at their face, but says they were nothing but skin and bone. The fellowship thanks the man for the useful information. With a little more information, the thief is good as caught. I really like how it uh, turns him over. It's Apparently, kinda there's a monster neat. lurking around the outskirts of town, stealing medicine, and only medicine. Rumors mm -hmm. claim the monster fled to the west. Let's go to the west. Thanks to the information gleaned from the townsfolk. The Fellowship is all but certain of who has stolen the royal treasure. The first clue was the Queen's description of the treasure. A small bottle containing a certain liquid. Then there's the bony figure seen fleeing town. The skeletal monster clutching the bottle of medicine and the monster that fled west. From all that information, the Fellowship distills the thief's true identity. Who done it? Oh, it's the skeletal monster, monster fleeing west. Realization strikes Winifred. I know who our thief is. The monster made of bones, Hedwin interjects. The one that fled west. Erwin nods in agreement, as if to say, another sage pronouncement from the great and wise. I mean, it seems so simplistic. I'm guessing. Maybe in the real game, there's like uh, some hunting and clues and kind of like detective portions. Winifred clears her throat, proclaims that the Fellowship shall head west, out of town, and walks off. Travel west to Nexton in pursuit of the monster. You fulfilled the necessary requirements and unlocked a man's character story. Yes. Oh, 
While exploring the world and diving deep into dungeons, you will encounter enemies with which you must do battle. Your adventure will be over if everyone in your battle is KO'd. Should you journey, meet an unfortunate end, you can continue from your last save point. So in your, it is in your interest to save often. Select data from the menu, screen and save. There is also an autosave feature to periodically keep you covered. Let's save. Can I go over here? I can just click where I want to go instead of using uh, the D pad, or not the D pad, the WASDA. We got some goblins. Alright, these are gems. You need to spend them to use certain skills. You gain one gem whenever you take an action and can store up to 10 at one time. It indicates how many gems a skill will cost. You can't use the skill if you don't have enough gems. So it looks like she only has gems to heal, so we don't need that. Am I missing a turn order? are elemental in nature. The six elements are fire, water, bolt, wind, light, and dark. Add value of a roll to attack and deal one. Okay, I gotcha. Cards take more damage from elements they are weak to and less damage from elements they are resistant against. Knowing your enemy's weakness and strength will help you choose which skills to wield to your advantage. I don't see anything that would say that he is. It's twice when you critical, yes. A good warrior wastes no time. He's been leveled up. new skill. Deal attack plus 10 light damage. Takes two crystals to cast. Everyone's leveled up. Edwin has leveled up. When Zephyr add attack value, add value of roll to attack and deal wind damage. One thing I was curious about. When you're low on HP, open the menu and select own cards and use recovery items or take a rest of it in town. I think this answers my question. I was wondering if leveling up got Hedwin his full health back. And it did, so I don't need to use it. Open the treasure chest. Pure target of poison. An antidote. Okay. following the road kind of is all I'm, I'm doing right now I wish I could see like a battle order here. Good work. Okay. 
wondering and being nosy. anything he will generate oh I could have because I got one because of a turn he made I keep that in mind Edwin leveled up Treasure discovered. Please pick one. Antidote. Oh, that's kind of tells you what you could have gotten. I do that to some of my D&D players. Give them, they find a treasure and let them select from a set of cards to see what was in it. 500 gold. items of the R key to make sure you you're using you can navigate while carrying many items press N and M to scroll I don't need to heal anything Swing. It was just a harder melee or damage, but you actually use a. You fill the necessary requirements and unlock Goblin Story. I'm sure I can't read it though. The fellowship moves westward, only to be unnerved by the sight of a human figure moving through the trees. The presence of large packs suggests a traveler. How you hell the travel Trevor. Traveler. What is it not? The sun bears down hard upon us this day, Winifred says, approaching him. The traveler lets out a chuckle. Indeed, I've just been swimming in the sea to the west. Then perhaps he is heading east. I beg your pardon, but did you catch sight of a monster fleeing west? Winifred inquires. He gives her a puzzled look. There's nothing out there but the sea, he says. That and a cave full of monsters on the opposite shore. I suspect you might find your quarry there. The fellowship exchange glances and nod as if to say, then that is where we shall go. Alas, they will need a boat to cross the sea. The traveler hoists his packs, suggests the fellowship speak to the fishermen on the western shore takes his leave. Search the western shore for the fishermen who may grant you safe passage across the sea. Let's not go there just yet. I haven't quite finished the story for that section, you see. Sorry. I like the battle system, but I would like a way to speed it up. Like, maybe fast forward, or have like a, a two times, three times speed.
we can't use the guess we have to this dude. Fellowship comes upon an anchored ship. Weird looking fisherman. Close by, a fisherman of exquisite physique pulls a net out of the water, his muscles rippling. This is no time for lustful reverie. Winifred races to his side and asks that he give the fellowship safe passage aboard the ship. Got body like that, and then the hair. <laughs> that vessel is cursed, the fisherman mutters, trembling. What on earth happened? Night after night, it leaves port without a soul aboard, headed I know not where. Come morning, it is once again anchored here. Hmm. This, to the fisherman's mind, is the result of a curse. I wonder if he... Skeletal thief. His head drops into his hands. With but a single dispeller, I am certain I could lift it and sail away. Alas, the fellowship find themselves without any dispeller. They resolve to return to Nexton and find some. Our Nexton for some dispeller to take back to the fisherman. The shore. All right. I wonder, can I jump? You can jump over, over to upward facing terrain cards. Yep. Okay. You can use the jump feature to travel across large distances without encountering monsters. Try jumping back to save time. I kind of like that. It's almost like a um, fast travel. I just have to click it. I don't even have to uh, do the jump. I just have to find it with the mouse and click it, and it takes me there. So I like that. Really good. All right. I'm just gonna go to the game parlor. It looks like here, or there's an apothecary there. Let's go to. Let's just go to the closest one. Looking young boy accosts the fellowship. Want to play a game with me? He asks. In this parlor, you can play cards. The child rambles on, wheedling you. I'll give you this if you play with me. Oh, that's uh, convenient how to play. Very well, you can learn the basic rules over a game. Are you ready? Yeah. The goal is to go. <coughs> Excuse me, the goal is to use your cards to get more points than the other players. You get points by arranging your cards into sets of matching cards or consecutive straights. Like rummy, I guess, pretty much, right? Try making a set. When the game starts, each player is dealt their hand one card at a time. Winifred's turn. Then everyone takes their actions in turn order. You're up first. Draw two cards from the deck. So it's just a different version of Rummy. Right. Now you have three cards in your hand. Select two that have the same number. This set is worth four points. Make a set with these selected cards. Yes. When you make a set, you earn points equal to the sum of the cards. From any cards left over, you can choose to choose one to remain in your hand. This is the end of your turn. Next, I'll act for the other player. I draw two cards. You don't have any card, or I don't have any cards that can make a set. When that happens, you have to discard all but one card in your hand. Discard until you have one card in your hand. Discard cards. Okay, it's your turn, but let me explain. Let me take this opportunity to explain the play screen. Is this your player card? That's where you can see how many points you have. The sets you've made are here. You can have up to three sets at one time. You can see what you have left in your card here. The pot is at the top. Any player can use these cards when making a set. Cards remaining in the deck is shown in the upper left. When it reaches zero, the game is over. And that's the play screen. 
Let's return to the game. I believe it was your turn. Draw two cards from the deck. Try making a set from the cards in the pot and what's in your your hand. You can make a set with up to two, up to three cards of the same number. You have three aces. So let's make a set. Yes. That's it for your turn. Already beating me. Draw two cards. By the way, you can also make sets from consecutive numbers, but you can only make one set per turn. You can make a you can make a two card set with the threes or a three card set, two, three, four, whichever make whichever you prefer. I assume this is worth more points. Yes. Remember what I told you about sets? You can make sets from two, two or three cards of the same number and three cards consecutive. But you can only make one set per turn. And you can only have up to three sets at a time. When you make a four set, you'll have to discard one set you already have. That's that's it for the basic rules. Okay, that's not bad. Oh, he just made a four. cards that means it's the last turn ha last but not least let me explain the menu screen bring up the menu with the escape key there you can look at the rule book and decide to abandon the game if you want all right right now complete a set of two or three cards of the same number for your hand or three consecutive gotcha i win yay you can only have three sets choose one to get rid of I would have had more points if I had gotten rid of the aces. That's it, the game. You were a winner. Coming in at number two with 17 points is the game parlor. And one with 18 is the winner, Fred. Will you play cards? I guess I actually have to play play to get that card. Select the rules. I guess you, you may, might unlock more. These rules are for a single opponent. Please select begin game. Alright. There's 31 cards that remain. Let's see who will go first. Hey, when he goes first, game begin. Draw two cards from the deck. I can't. Oh, you don't have any set, so I gotta discard. Discard your, your hand until you have one. Keep the big eight. This game where I think the more numbers you have, the better. Or the higher numbers you have, the better. Damn, he's already... If I get a six or a nine here. Uh, but I guess we can make that, right?
I take it he can't see what I have, or maybe he can, I don't know. I mean, I can see what he has, so. There. I don't want to do that, but... Kick my butt. Oh, why did he do that? Oh, hell yeah. computer, I guess, giving me the win or something, I don't know. Um, yeah, but it's not worth any points. Guess I do that and just get rid of the same thing. It seems like he was giving me the game. Not a bad little game. That was kind of fun. Thanks for playing, the boy squeals. He hands over the medicine bottle as promised. It's fine, I got a new skill. And you can play this from the title screen now. That's kind of funny. Yep. We unlocked his story, but can't read it. Oh, I messed up on that. 
Hit yes. All right. Fisherman snatches up the concoction, so delighted that his pectoral muscles begin twitching. Winifred ship politely ignores this fact. Winifred hands the despairing fisherman a dispeller and asks him for safe passage to the cave beyond. The fisherman snatches up the concoction, so delighted that his pectoral muscles begin twitching. The fellowship politely ignores this fact. He opens the bottle and proceeds to douse the ship. The monsters that you await in the cave are most formidable. Speak with the fishermen when you are ready to depart. I'm sure. Speak to the fishermen when you're ready to make your way. Let's, let's go. The peril of the dungeon lies ahead. Ventures are advised to be at least a level 7. What am I? Are you ready to set sail for the cave? The fisherman asks. How will you respond? All right, then. All right, Just let me know I'm level 7, this right? Yes. We're good. Let's go. We are. Let's go. Let's shove off, then. He beckons you aboard. The Fellowship arrives at the mouth of a dank cave. Its damp, rocky expanse threatening to swallow them. Monsters could come pouring out at any moment. The fisherman has anchored the ship in the cove. Come back here when you're ready to return to the mainland, he says. Treasure chest. Ooh, a magic staff. Well, let's equip that. Burr, I think. How can I tell what they are weak to, can I? I, mean, I guess it's probably once you've done stuff with them enough. I like how it, the wind uh, kind of spun the part around. That was nice. I was say, should have blown it up soon. Freeze. Deal attack plus four water damage. Inflict freeze if the roll is five or greater. It's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, 
Yeah, up here is probably where the... I was just going to see if there's treasure down this way. About the enemy. Freeze it. Well, it would have been froze. It went a D6. So it looks like there was a, a D, D12. Or not a D12, I guess it was D8. When he leveled. Since we can do this, yeah, I was going to say, like, can we... Well, it'll only let you go to where you can... Like, I guess you're limited in your view. That's kind of cool. I'll let you just skip all the way around everything. I wonder if there's, like, a light spell later on or something. And fight. I almost kind of wish they would show the critical. Like, show you, um... Rolling a dice or something, maybe? kind of like Zelda. It looks like there's just a simple key. Right, so you got keys in the dungeons that you're looking for. Let's do this. doing that because it's weak or if it'll do if that wind if I do it to other characters creatures the door before you is shut quite tightly it appears to have will a you try inserting the simple, simple key, key yes maybe. the fellowship slides the simple key into the keyhole and turns it the lock opens with a thunk I like how it I can click off and it still reads it. I just wanted to uncover every tile. Wonder if that's probably if there's like a completion bonus. Maybe. card and hold the enter key to raise it up ever so slightly if you hold it just long enough you might be able to peek at what it contains okay, choose a card 
and hold the entry key. Berwin pushes the massive hand ever so slightly the door with all his might. It moves not an inch. Berwin gives the door a roundhouse kick in pure frustration. As his foot connects, the door trundles to the side. Kind of funny. So it was one of those sliding contraptions. Something leaps out at the Fellowship from the darkness. Winifred deftly parries the attack with her staff. Edwin looks fondly at Winifred, only to have his reverie interrupted by Berwyn's cry of, It's coming back. It's just a skeleton. Let's Two do skeletons. this. Like if, if we do play this, I have to put like a harder difficulty because this just seems really. It could also be a demo. They want you to be able to kill things and not struggle. surroundings as several somethings leap out of the shadows nice. new music sounds like a boss fight okay We're just gonna pick off the little guys first because that's how you're supposed to do these fights. That was horrible. Oh, stop hurting her. Kill yourself. And you are going to flame attack. Hey. Nice work. All right, you're ready for. Ready for lightning strike? Don't know if he's susceptible to it. Did some good damage though. He healed. Alright. You can white white him. He's gotta be. Hope for that. Hey. Congrats. Really easy. That is my only worry. Game might be too easy. Winifred neatly steps through the fiend's remains and opens the chest. Inside is what appears for all the world to be an ordinary medicine bottle. At last, the royal treasure is in safe hands once more, Hedwin sighs. Winifred and Berwin nod in agreement. Obtain the royal treasure. Treasure in hand, the fellowship exit the cave, exalted. Berwin, any other? In time, 
the Fellowship find themselves before the Queen once more. They offer her the retrieved treasure. As reward for the arduous task of returning our prized possession, I bid you name anything you desire. She is positively beaming and seems prepared to shout. I'm wondering if it would keep riches, continuing. Whether they demand them or it not. does not continue the dialogue if you if you click through. But at that moment, a massive roar, a light which had never been heard before, shakes the entire castle. As the roar recedes, one of the royal guard, pale as a sheet, bursts into the royal hall. He struggles to gather his breath. Just now, over the castle, a... a dragon, he pants to Queen Nilla. A dragon. So the great evil has returned. Queen Nilla turns her gaze to the sky, dumbfounded. So the monster troubles are connected, Edwin says so under his breath, so the queen does not hear. A profound silence settles over the royal hall. The fellowship stand tall, unflinching. As though they know what must be done in the face of such a crisis. So, looks to be the end of the demo, I'm guessing. The land now that the dragon has returned. I'm afraid that will have to wait. We're all out of time for this portion of the adventure. Don't you worry. We'll continue the tale another time. I look forward to our next session. Until then, I bid you good day. Farewell, friend. All right, so I actually liked that pretty well. Definitely will buy it and continue playing. Um, I just hope the game's more difficult. Uh, it was that was way too easy. Um, new. You can now select the multiplayer game part. Oh. Funny. Okay, no, alright. It's got options. I'm just curious if it had a difficulty setting in here that I missed. Okay. Alright, well, I don't see any, uh, any uh, difficult but I really enjoyed the game I hope you enjoyed the first look at it with the demo uh, I will definitely buy this I don't know if I will play it on stream I don't know if this is really gonna be a good streamable game but it might be one I play off stream record and put it on YouTube for for people to watch and enjoy uh, but thank you guys hope you had a good time um, if you like what you see please hit that follow and like button down the down below uh, and you can always catch me uh, playing streaming games on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash byjax, B-Y-J-A-X-X. -X. I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, from 6 p.m. Eastern uh, at 9 or 10. It depends on, on uh, how tired I am actually at that time. But uh, I also try to stream on weekends, noon to 4, noon to 5. Um, but those are always not guaranteed it's best to I, I usually announce that like a day or two in advance but guys thank you very much hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you soon